at NBAA with Jim Allman, President and CEO of Blackhawk Aerospace, to talk about the history of Blackhawk Aerospace and what they do. Jim, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so, I know Blackhawk Aerospace started in 1999, but let's talk for a minute about your history in aviation, because I know you started learning to fly at a much younger age. Yes, I uh, was in the Air Force, but I was not a pilot in the Air Force, and I did learn to fly while I was uh, living in England and um, just got the passion and loved it. And when I got out of the Air Force, I went to Spartan School of Aeronautics in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and that just kind of started my career from there. So at what point in time did you say you wanted to make a career out of aviation by starting your own company? Um, that's a good question. Um, when I started flight instructing after I got all my ratings, uh, I didn't like flight instructing. It was uh, not really wanted to do, so kind of turned to corporate flying. But uh, what I do now, uh, I never dreamed I would be doing. Uh, it wasn't on my radar, I didn't even know it existed. And uh, you know, my daughter's my marketing director, and I remember when she was in college, she still didn't know what she wanted to do. And I said, I was 30 years old before I figured out what I really wanted to do. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, I, uh, once I learned this uh, business that we're in, uh, the passion grew and grew, and, and, and now uh, we've built this company from 1999, an idea, to uh, we're the largest uh, company in the world that does engine upgrades like we do. So there's a number of programs that you offer. Um, I think one easy way to maybe summarize it very generically, at least for my sake, mm -hmm. is you make beautiful flying machines go faster. Yeah, we, we like to say we make great airplanes better. Mm -hmm. um, I, I saw a need as a pilot, as a, when you fly as a pilot, you, you always want to go faster. Nobody buys an airplane to go slow. <laughs> right. So uh, we looked at you know, different things to make the airplanes go faster and always had this idea. So once we started the company, uh, I told my, my business partners, because we had a company that bought and sold airplanes that, you know, we. I have this idea that we can make them go faster, and, and what pilot doesn't want to go faster? So that's kind of how that all started. And now, like I said, we, we don't do anything to the engines. We put brand new engines that have a higher horsepower rating on the airplane, and it increases performance significantly. And does it zero time the engine when you do the modification? It's a brand new engine. It's never been overhauled. It comes off the uh, Pratt Winnie shelf as, as they're built, so it's... it's uh, they always think, well, what do you do to the engine to make it go faster? We don't do anything. We, we buy a higher horsepower engine from Pratt, and, and we do the engineering to get it approved on the airplane as an aftermarket install. So what was your first program, STC? Our first program uh, was a Conquest One, mm -hmm. and it was an STC we actually purchased from another uh, company that had no use for it, so we, we bought it. But one of the things we learned very quickly was that Having the STC is this much of the, of the business plan, you have to have a contract with Pratt & Whitney. Mm -hmm. And it took me about a year of negotiating with Pratt & Whitney to get them to sell us engines at a price that I could resell them at. Mm -hmm. So uh, after we did the Conquest, then we had the King Air Series, uh, the 90 Series, the 200 Series, Cheyennes, mm -hmm. Caravan. It's always been a very uh, you know, stepped platform that we wanted to make sure whatever we do is safe and whatever we do is gonna be accepted in the marketplace. And sometimes you gotta guess, but so far, knock on wood, I've guessed right about 99% of the time. So in addition to King Air, you also have a program for the Cessna Caravan? We do the, the both caravans, the small caravan and the large caravan. And we have two different engine models for that, the PT6-140A and the uh, 42A. And the A designates that it's for a single engine installation. So it has a little bit different fuel control unit. Um, and then we, we do a Cheyenne 1s, 2s, 2As, and then the uh, 200s, and then the 350s. And now we're in the process of doing uh, PC-12. So what kind of speed gain do you get? If we can't get 25 knots, it's not worth us mm -hmm. worth us doing the program. So we shoot for 25 knots, and uh, on the 350, we exceeded that. We get 35 to 40 knots, so it's, it's quite a bit. 
and I, I did. We are selling our 100th upgrade for the 350 in about three and a half years that we've had that STC. And the reason people buy that is because they really like the size of the airplane. They can put eight people in the back. It goes a long way. But now we can give them near jet speeds while still carrying eight, eight, nine people in the back. And that's been very popular, very popular. So 100 people so far have said, it's worth it. You know, let's do it, let's upgrade it. And nobody has ever called me and said, I wish I wouldn't have done it because I like to go slow. You don't buy an airplane to go slow. So there's a lot of talk about sustainability in aviation. Mm -hmm. And obviously getting an airplane to altitude faster, I assume, provides a level of efficiency that helps aircraft operate more efficient, sustainable mm -hmm. way. Uh, yeah, sustainability is, is kind of the new buzzword. And, mm -hmm. and uh, our industry has to adapt because it's coming. And uh, I don't know that uh, electric engines or, or motors are quite there. It's really not the motors, it's the battery. So um, I think there's going to be some hybrids that come, come down the line. And our job will be to integrate them into existing platforms. And we're really looking forward to that, to integrating a electric, you know, turbine hybrid type engine. So you have part of the engine is regenerating the batteries in flight. And then part of the engine is helping cut your fuel costs and your fuel flows and all that. And I think as an industry, we're all working very hard towards that end to, to, to try to meet the mandates of 2030 and 2035. So I would assume with an investment in a program like this, increasing the aircraft speed, there's also an increase in the residual value of the airplane? Oh yeah, I mean, everybody that buys our upgrades generally could turn around and sell the airplane for more than they have invested in the airplane. And we, we spec on them ourselves. We, we'll buy an airplane, put the engines on it, resell it, and it, and it does very well. So the value does go up, you know, almost dollar for dollar, if not more, uh, for the cost of the, the upgrade. So it, it's, it's a value, the, the, <clears throat> the accountants like it. Of course, the pilots love it, you know. So uh, if the guy in the back says it's good, you're good to go. <laughs> so I imagine that you have both in your customer base individual owner operators mm -hmm. as well as fleet yes. operators? So uh, it kind of runs the gamut. Um, we, on the, our caravan upgrades, we sell to a lot of skydive operations because oh. they, they can double their income because they can do more climbs, you know, jumps, back to land, climb, mm -hmm. jump, back to land, back to landing. And, and so the, uh, a lot of skydive operations around the world have bought our upgrades. And then you have uh, the UN in Africa uses our engines to t on a caravan to fly into unimproved runways and carry a lot of people or weight or cargo in and out where we can give them better performance to, to come out. And, uh, and then you do have the fleet operators and that have several uh, cargo planes that, they, that they'll upgrade their caravans for that. But in the King Air fleets, it's generally more limited to corporate owners mm -hmm. and individual owners. The smaller the plane, the more chance it's going to be a, a pilot owner. And the larger the plane, he's going to have a professional pilot up front, and then the people in the back uh, are paying the bill. But they, they like the fact that they're getting from point A to B a lot faster. Mm -hmm. So are there other programs that you're looking at for the future? As I mentioned, the PC-12 is our next program. We are actively uh, flying that. It is in flight test mode now as we speak. Um, our engineering is down the road pretty good on it and we're hoping to have that approved by uh, uh, May of next year. And then following on that, we're probably look at, looking at a TBM 700 upgrade on the old legacy airplanes. Mm -hmm. And then after that, who knows? But we're, there's always something coming and, and we listen to our customers a lot and they, they'll come to us and say, have you ever thought of this? Have you ever thought of that? And sometimes we say, well, no, because of there's some reason why it won't work. But if it's a good enough reason, then we'll spend some time and money and explore it. So mm -hmm. we're, we're always innovating and trying to find the next, the next big thing out there. Is there a certain amount of time that it takes to introduce a new program like this? Obviously with the SDC, I know, you know, FAA approval can be a lengthy process. That's a great question. Um, we're probably the fastest in the industry at, at getting it. Uh, STC of this significance to mm -hmm. do an engine upgrade. So on the 350 and the 300, we, we got the STC in a year. Wow. 
most companies it'll take them two to three years, three to four times the cost. We just, we've done it right. We've always worked hard to make sure we do everything the FAs expects us to do so that when we turn in all of our engineering, we come away with a yes. And we don't come away with a no because you start losing trust with the FAA, then they, they really look at you a lot differently. So it takes us about a year to, to get it out there, but um, we start marketing as soon as we start flying. So the, the PC-12, for example, we already have five contracts and deposits in place. And we just started flying it a month ago. So it's, it's, it's going to be a successful program. But um, every STC has a, a birth, uh, a growth, uh, a level off platform, and then eventually a descent. And it's just a living document that as you get more and more in the fleet and become saturated, you've got to either spruce it up or move on to something else. Mm -hmm. But SDCs are they're very complicated uh, documents to get, they're very hard to get, and they're very expensive to get. So how many total aircraft in the active fleet are flying with a Black Hawk modification on them? Um, I think that's a subjective number, but the last I heard were, were pushing a little over a thousand airplanes. That's amazing, little impressive little milestone. Yeah, yeah uh, our, our closest competitor that really doesn't compete with us anymore probably did about 50. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, wow, okay. So yeah, and since 1999 we've done over a thousand airplanes that have our STC on it in one uh, model or another. And, um, and we're still selling. We, I think we're going to sell two or three here today. And uh, this show's a great show, it's a great turnout. And um, I, I think that, that we're going to come away with several contracts. Amazing. Well, congratulations on the King Air 350 Thank you. milestone. That's incredible. We are really appreciative of your time today. I know it's a busy show. We don't want to <laughs> take up too much of your time. But thanks for being with us on Business Air well, TV. Well, thank, thank you for having me. Thank you.